So now that I've got my basic pattern drafted out, what I'm going to be able to do now is take this pattern that I've drawn and superimpose the lines I want over the top. I just fell into a Victorian booby trap. I've realised that these two diagrams are actually fairly interchangeable. They're both drawn exactly the same way. The two drawings are different because they're not to scale. So my drawing all over them and fitting the embroidery on wasn't entirely practical. I'm going to draft this a third time, God help me, and we're going to see if I can take the pieces I want of the basic coat draft and then mix and match the pieces I need. This sack jacket has a seam that looks remarkably like the seam that I need on my coat. Right, now I have a completed pattern at last. What I'm going to have to do is to trace each individual piece off, put a seam allowance on it and cut that out. So finally we have a pattern that I can actually use. Now I can finally get out some fabric, calico, and we can start mocking this thing up.
on, here we are. Finally, I get to try this thing on. This is going to be a kind of unusual fitting in a way because it's not a very fitted garment. So it's not going to be a hugely complex fitting process, one hopes. But there are a few things to look at. So first of all, we've got to be careful not to overfit it, if you see what I mean. If you look at the back here, I could take this sort of lots further in here and make it a lot more, but it's not supposed to be like that. So it's going to be kind of a light touch here. First of all, let's see if we can do it up. It's supposed to meet edge to edge like that. And it is overlapping, but I think where we'll pin it is my bust is the widest point. So if we overlap this, close the center front over the bust then that will be the point where you know I know how much it needs to be without overlapping it too much and making it too small. That's what I'll do first and I've got to make sure I get these two sides level which I'll do by looking at the neck as well and getting the neck to line up. So I'm going to put a couple of pins in down the front. So I've got one pin in at the bust so I can see, I can just see through there how wide that overlap is. So I'm going to reproduce that all the way up because it's supposed to be two straight edges. So that overlap will tell me how much I need to take out at the centre front. And then once we've got this part aligned, it'll be easier to look at everything else. So our centre front is aligned. There we go. Do you notice all of this? room in the neck now. There's all sorts of stuff going on here. Now, this is where I get very smug and very pleased with myself because I noticed on the original coat on the huge pictures on Google Arts and Culture, there were two little seams that start rather near the neck at the centre front and come out diagonally like that. And I thought, are they bust darts and the proof is in the pudding because I didn't put them on the pattern I didn't know what they were but look if I take a little dart there it fits so usually a bust dart is a bit of fabric you take out to make it fit around the bust so here's your fullest point around the bust and usually a bust dart will be down here or maybe over here you might have clothes that have got a little dart there but that dart can be anywhere all the way around the apex of the bust. And on this garment, because that front section is so long and straight and needs to be, you know, a blank canvas for all the embroidery, the bust dart has ended up up here. And the proof of the pudding is in the mock-up because there it is. That's the only sensible place to get rid of all that fullness that's hanging around there. So I'm rather pleased with myself, I figured that out. And I'm going to put some pins in here and then this side too. Now it's near impossible to get them even, especially with a microphone attached. But I am fairly symmetrical, so I will do these roughly for now. And then I'll take it off, sort of repin them the same size but a bit more even. And then I'll try it on again. Now, somebody did ask in the comments on my last video about the coat. So you drafted this pattern based on the measurements you took for your previous project. Weren't you wearing a corset then? Do you need to leave room for other garments over the top? Yes. <laughs> in fact, I realised that after the second draft, I think. And I ended up actually drafting that pattern out one more time than you saw on film because I was like, oh yeah. I should be putting more room in this, both for the possibility of wearing it without a corset and the possibility of having a lot more on underneath this coat. Previous project, I was measuring for a bodice for an evening dress. This is a coat that theoretically goes over the evening dress. It needs to be a bit bigger. So I did redraft the pattern with a bit more room in it. There you see my little bust darts. And now, 
Look how well that fits over there. It's supposed to be loose from here down. It's got a little bit of shape in the back, but not very much, which kind of matches the picture of the original coat. We've got the neckline in about the right place. I'm conveniently wearing a dress that has a neckline that's right up to the neck. So I can kind of compare. Seems to be about right, right at the back. Shoulders are always a pain in the butt. And I have very slightly broad shoulders. So these shoulders are not quite wide enough. I did add a bit because I know I've got broad shoulders, but not enough, evidently. Unless these are sleeves that sort of sit a bit further onto the shoulder. I'll be looking up and trying to remember that. I know that Luca has done a call with us in which he talked about sleeves. In fact, it was in our enrollment period in 2020. We did a workshop about sleeves and Luca was telling us that sometimes the sleeve is right on where a modern sleeve would be. Sometimes in the 1890s, it went right up onto the shoulder. So it just depends on the fashion. Also, a really annoying thing I notice is we've got wrinkles here. You see that? Especially if I stand normally, we've got lots of wrinkles down there. Not so much this side, although there are still some. So possible approaches to this could be, it might be that that just pulls forward. And one solution might be to cut a bit further into here and make the armhole a bit wider. Possibly not a good idea to do first because you don't want to be cutting things too soon. Another option is it might be that the shoulder needs taking up a little bit here. So we could pin into there and see whether that helps. But a certain amount of this is about posture. Watch these wrinkles. This is me, Kathy Hay, 2022. Sits at a laptop a lot, uses a phone a lot. Here is Edwardian version of posture in this coat. Watch what happens to these wrinkles. A lot of this is about how the pattern has been drafted. I drafted this from an original set of instructions. I think I talked about this in one of the videos about the previous project. If you compare pattern drafts for bodices, modern ones and Victorian ones, if you laid them over each other, you would notice that the armhole was a lot further back on the Victorian ones because people stood with a lot more erect posture. I'm probably exaggerating here, but we naturally stand in a very hunched posture. Now, again, I'm exaggerating because we spend so much of our time driving, using a laptop, on our phones. We spend a lot of time sitting like this. It used to be that the posture was much more like this, much more erect. So that is why when you put on a pattern you might have drafted from Victorian instructions, you might find you get a lot of wrinkling here, or you can feel that it feels like the armhole is just kind of tight here at the front. It's because your shoulders sit further forward than a woman of your shape and size would have done in the period. So it's up to you whether you fit it for your posture today or whether you try to remember to stand like an Edwardian lady. So. I'm going to make that decision. Also, I'm going to try just lifting this shoulder up a little bit because I think that might help too. I think it may be the shape of my shoulders. Not easy to do on yourself. Oh, all right, I will take it off and do it. But I'll mark that first. To admit the smell of calico freshly pressed is reminding me of my wedding dress days. I used to make wedding dresses for a living many years ago. And brides are not impressed if you make your mock ups out of curtains from the thrift store. They are expecting proper muslin.
here are my two darts. I've drawn them in in pencil and taken out the pins. And now I've pinned together down the centre front so I've got the two aligned and I'll probably pin together at that shoulder there. This is just to help me even them out so that both of the darts are the same. So I've got the whole of the front pinned together. And it wouldn't have to pin it a bit more. And now... I'm going to pin along where I've drawn the dart on one side so that I can see it on the other side. Clearly if you are more asymmetrical than me, you will not be evening these out. Hmm, so that's how it looks. The pencil marks for the dart on this side there. The pin's showing the other side of that, so we're going to even those up. So the dart on one side goes all the way down to there, on the other side it goes down to there. So I'm going to even it out and end it there. If that had any sense, I would have marked the bust point, which would have been much more sensible. But hey, let's wing it! They are in roughly the same place, which is impressive far off. If the dart on one side ended there and the dart on the other side ended there at that pencil mark, I'm going to finish it here. Which is probably not where the bus point is, but hey, it's all an experiment. Although I think I remember I was more confident about this side. So... Alright, I can always take more out, but I can't put it back. Hmm. Now I'm taking out where I've pinned them together. Over that, I can pin my new dots in place. Now that I've pinned my new darts in, shoulders up a little bit just to pull some of the fabric up a bit to see if that helps with the wrinkling a little bit. I think it's mostly posture but it's worth a try. crazy about those darts. They look reasonably attractive. Uh, I don't know. They go to about the right place, but that one doesn't. Uh, okay, they need to come out a bit faster here.
little bit, a little bit out at the neck. It's improved it too. It's a little bit of room going on here and in the back too, but I think that's room that will make room for sleeves on anything. So I'm just going to note to self about how much I could add if I wanted to on the shoulders. And then we can look at the hem. So now that I've got this part pretty much organised, I can start thinking about sleeves and collar because there's no point having all that effort into putting a sleeve and the collar on if we haven't got this basic shape first. So that's why I made a mock-up of just this part and we'll add the sleeves and the collar now that we've got this sorted. It also means now I've got this sorted up here, we can go to the hem because pinning up the shoulders lifts it up a bit, you know it moves it around. So now that we've got this, this is now the time to look at the hem. And looking at it, it's not bad. It's a little bit long at the front there. You can see just that front edge is just on the ground a little bit too much. And of course I'm wearing the boots that I'm likely to wear with it or at least the highest heel I'm likely to wear with it. And we've got a little bit too much length at the front, but around the back, it's looking pretty good. It needs to be a little bit longer at the back. And I'm trying to stand up straight and not twist too much to look because it will give me an inaccurate result. So I think we're good at the back and we just need to lose a little bit at the front. So I'm just gonna fold this over once and pin it one side. And around this front section, I'll take her out the same off all the way around. And then the side, by the time we get to here, we're fine. So I'm just gonna take a little bit off there and gradually lose the rest as we go around. Doing this fairly roughly just to See. Now, how's that? It's looking better. Yeah. It's no longer hitting the ground, except when I bend down. That looks pretty good, but it's about as long as it can go. And around the back, it's looking pretty good too. So, I'm going to look in this mirror just so I'm looking straight on. Yeah, I think that's good. Oh, maybe. Mm, it's looking like it comes up a little too far at the side, so just that very slightly. And of course this is still just to give me a guide because by the time all of that fabric is cut out in velvet and embroidered and all the rest of it, you know, this won't be a perfect hem for the final coat, but we're in the right ballpark. It's looking pretty darn good. All right. So all of these changes I'm now going to mark on the pattern itself so that all of the modifications are there ready for when I cut out in the velvet. And then we're on to sleeve and collar. Thank you. 